Hi, Mark. Hey, John. How you doing? Good. How are you? All right. I'm doing great. So this is the flagstone. Yeah, this is the flagstone we wrote you about. Yeah, I love it. I love it. This looks like you did a lot of cleaning to it. Yeah, definitely. It's been a lot of work. We stripped um, a lot of shellac or, or urethane from the floor. This is what it looked like when we first moved in. Oh, wow. You can see the haze on Ooh, there. Holy mackerel, yeah. Wow, so how'd you take that off? We used a paint stripper yep. and uh, a lot of elbow grease. Oh, a lot of elbow grease, I can tell. And it looks like you've done work around the entire space? Yeah, we've stripped the wallpaper off the walls and pulled up some carpet, All hoping right. to just really refinish the steps and everything. Okay, and you wrote me about a couple specific things to do with the flagstone, correct? Yep. Yeah. When we pulled that carpet up, we noticed that that joint was in a state of disrepair. Okay. And then we've got another stone over here I wanted you to take a look All at. All right, yeah, look at that. All it's right. got a good rock to it when you yeah. step on it. Oh, I can see that, yeah. So this is a safety thing. Oh yeah, look at that wiggly. So I can see you use some shims here, some plastic shims to keep yep. it somewhat Just... level. Yeah, so this is a safety hazard, definitely something that we should repair. So why don't we get some tools and get going? Awesome, sounds All right, great. John. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is loosen up these stones. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna alleviate the tension by breaking this joint of cement all the way across the doorway. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna start with a cold chisel. There you go. All right, so John, why don't you just get that chisel under that stone and just see if we can pry it up. Oh yeah, okay, I want it to come right away. All right, so take that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here. So what I'm trying to do, John, is crush this joint instead of pulling it up. Yep. See if you can get under that stone, John. Just pry it up. Previous homeowner stuck some silicone under there as glue. That's what held us up a little. Peel that right back. Yep. All right, let's see if you can get under that bed of mortar right there. So let's get everything swept up. All right, John, now it's time to mix the mortar. We have a couple different choices with our mortar. We could use a type N, but I like to use that outside with brickwork. There's a little bit more flexibility in the type N. The type S, which is what is in front of you, I tell everybody all the time, when you hear type S, it means strength. So in a doorway just like this and nailing down these flagstone, I think we want to stay strong, so that's why I'm with the Type S. Great. We used to have to get sand, lime, Portland, mix them all together, but now they make it very easy. You can go into your big box hardware store and just get a pre-mixed bag, and all we have to do is add water. That's convenient. Gingerly start to turn it over. We're inside, so we want to cause very little dust. And the easier you go, the less dust will be. All right, so this is looking pretty good, but before we lay down our mortar bed, we want to add a bonding agent. You can apply the bonding agent to the mortar directly, or what I like to do is get a paintbrush and paint it on. That way I get all the nooks and crannies. Make sure we get everything. You can't use too much. We can use it whether it's dry or wet. We can put our mortar on top of it, so. Great. What they didn't do the first time here was they didn't pre-wet this cement block. Yep. What that did was suck out all of the water out of the mix and made the mix very brittle. So that was the start of the problems that you had with those two flagstone. Okay. Now I'm gonna get ready for the bed. All we're looking to do is level this out. We're actually gonna leave it a little higher than the stone needs to be. I'm gonna really try to jam it into this stone and under the stone. Now this mortar that we're using right now is a little stiff, but when you're doing any type of stone work, a flagstone or just a regular stone, the material is usually a lot heavier. 
So the stiffer the mortar, the more strength it has to kind of prop it up as you're working it into place. So, yeah. so your mark is going to be just the edge yep. of the stone, and I like to wiggle down into place. All right, we're just going to shake it down. Okay. You can just imagine the bond that I'm making on the bottom of the stone as I wiggle. Yep. Just wiggle that into place. All right, right in there, John. All right, so you see the voids. All we want to make sure is we don't have any. Be mindful of the stone that it's still floating a bit. I'm going to come on top of you for this joint here. I'm going to use the sponge for a couple different things. I'm going to clean the edges of the stone, just like you see me doing here. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, what I'm going to do is rub this sponge over that joint. And you see the sand that I'm picking up? Yep. Okay, that sand, we call it the aggregate. All that sand is going to be pulled up to the top, and it's going to mimic the existing joint. And eventually, everything ought to look the same. Perfect. We'll have to do this a few times. There we go. John, why don't you give me that edge right there? Yep. So I love all this. You see that right there? All yep. that sand. Once this dries, it's going to look like the rest of the floor, and you won't even know we were here. That's great. So let's let this set up a little bit, and then we'll have to hit it one or two more times. Great. All right. So John, believe it or not, this is a very common problem. Every time you bring masonry into something that's wood, there's always a break. A little extra going on here is this wood has actually sucked the water out of the material. Interesting. Which, yeah, it makes it weak and brittle, and that's why this will break up. So. All we need to do is break this joint up, clean it out a little bit, and we're going to replace it with what we call a soft joint, which is just caulking. Cool. I want to put an edge tape down here. Okay. What it's going to allow us to do is let that caulking set up after we put it in. I'm going to use a little trick that I learned years ago to help me smooth this caulking. And it's just using a little dish soap. All right, John, what do you think? It looks beautiful. All right, well, I'm happy with it as well. So all I ask is that you wait 28 days for this to cure. This is a perfect temperature for curing, so we're going to be good. You can see that we're a little dark right now. That's only because we're wet. But once that starts to dry out, you'll see that it matches the floor just great. And over here, the caulking joint, pretty much the same thing, right? The goal was just to roll it up a little bit so when you paint that riser white, everything blends in seamlessly. And I think we achieved that. So happy with that as well. And then the last little bit of homework that you have is this masonry sealer. It's actually a luster, so it'll make sure that the entire floor, the stone, and the joints brighten up a little bit and have a shine to them. And that's also going to help us take this patch into the room and, again, make everything look seamless. Perfect. All right, great. So thanks for having me, John. Thanks, Mark. Glad everything went well. Really and I'll appreciate see you it. soon. Yeah, you got it. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.